Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part five of the pandemic 101 definitions. So if you saw part four, I was going through what the various stages of illness, you know, serious, critical, etc. And so in this one, we're going to be talking about things like quarantining and uh, medical ventilation, excuse me, mechanical ventilation, things like that. All right. So self quarantine is the individual is asymptomatic. In other words, there are no symptoms um, and they want to make sure that they'll ask individuals to stay in their homes for 14 days because currently, you know, and, and I know that there is wide speculation about 14 days to 28 days with respect to the incubation period, but that's what that means. Self isolation. You are isolating at home, you know, basically on good faith that you're going to be monitoring yourself. Quarantine means separating um, a person or a group of people who have been exposed to a contagious disease, but have not developed symptoms from others who have not been exposed in order to prevent the possible spread of that disease. Um, and it says quarantine is usually established for the incubation period of the communicable disease, which is the span of time during which people have developed illness after exposure. So self quarantine would be, um, you know, you're just quarantining at home. Basically quarantine is usually that they have you like the people that they uh, repatriated or people that they brought back from the diamond princess and they quarantined them. So there's a level of exposure, but there's no development of symptoms, but they just want to keep them away from anybody in the general population in case that exposure becomes an infection um, or is already an infection. Medical isolation, different from quarantine. Isolation is people who have been confirmed to be infected with a communicable disease and are as such isolated from the healthy population. So those people would be put into negative pressure rooms. So that is you're confirmed, you know, you've had a you've had an exposure, you are confirmed, you're going into an isolation room, okay? Um, when they put people in a negative pressure room, uh, we, I heard that term so, so many times in the last couple of weeks and not really understood what it meant. So I hope this is interesting to you because it was for me. Um, that a negative pressure room is an isolation technique used in hospitals and medical centers to prevent cross contaminations from room to room. It includes a ventilation that generates negative pressure to allow air to flow into the isolation room, but not escape from the room as air will naturally flow from areas with higher pressure to areas with lower pressure, thereby preventing contaminated air from escaping the room. And this technique is used to isolate patients with airborne contagious diseases, such as of course this SARS-CoV-2. Okay, um, treatment is medical care that's given to a patient for an illness or injury. It's not respective to what kind of treatment, just means that you are receiving some kind of treatment. All right, supportive care. So we have heard a lot, you know, there are no vaccines, there are no treatments or nothing that they know, there, there's no cure. So they say for this person, you know, if they do have uh, SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, that they will provide supportive care. And supportive care is the strategy of supportive care is to do whatever is possible to keep the vital organ systems functioning. And that means monitoring vitals such as temperature, blood pressure, and oxygen levels. And providing oxygen can be critical, particularly in the issue of something like this. And it can include a whole host of different types of treatment, which we're gonna go into really quickly here. Um, so we heard the other day that when the first person in California who they believe had, um, you know, community transmission, when they transferred them from one hospital to another had already been intubated. So I wanted to touch on that. So intubated means to put in or to put a tube in and commonly used to refer to the insertion of a breathing tube into the trachea for medical ventilation. For example, as a life-saving measure, an emergency room physician might intubate a patient who is not breathing adequately so that the lungs can be ventilated. So it's meant to give them a way to push air so that the person can breathe properly if they are having trouble doing that for themselves. So that's what that means, intubated. I would say that that is a relatively invasive measure. Um, mechanical vent, so this is kind of in order of severity, these next um, three. So mechanical ventilation, something else that we hear is a life support treatment. A mechanical ventilator is a machine that helps people breathe when they are not able to breathe on their own. And the mechanical ventilator is also called a ventilator, respirator, or breathing machine. So it's the person is not capable of doing it for themselves anymore. That particular function is not being um, carried out by the body. So they need assistance doing that. So mechanical ventilation. Um, ECMO, which is a term that we have heard a ton and it is a short-term means of providing life support in people who are seriously ill, maybe lung or heart failure, or maybe both. 
Specifically, ECMO infuses oxygen into the blood and removes carbon dioxide, and it can also provide hemodynamic or blood pressure support. So that is a pretty advanced situation if you have a patient who is receiving ECMO as part of their supportive care. I would assume that anybody receiving ECMO is going to be in the, if I'm being generous, serious, uh, serious condition, but more likely in the critical condition. Uh, another thing that it's coming out that they're having to do is dialysis for kidney function. And dialysis is the clinical purification of blood by dialysis as a substitute for the normal function of the kidney. And so that is gonna bring us to the close of part five and in part six, which I'm gonna film in just a minute here. Sorry about filming three videos a day right now, but I just wanna get the basic definitions out there and then start moving into some of the other stuff that I have for you. Um, if these kinds of videos are helpful for you, please click like, subscribe. And if you wanna be notified when I upload a new video, just go ahead and click that little bell notification. None of my videos are monetized on this series because this is not about money and it's not about views. It's just about giving you information that I think you may find helpful during this time. If you think other people could benefit from it, please share it. And I will see you guys in part six. Bye.